Hello everybody, welcome to the I Am IT Geek YouTube channel. My name is Shabazz Dan, as ever, I am the IT Geek. We are on a new series. Um, I always get excited when starting a new series, um, mainly because it's just, you know, excitement of talking about a new topic and exploring some new demos and things like that. Obviously, the you know, if you give the VDI series we've just done as an example, there's a long series, each subtopic that we did, so we did DevBox, we did Windows 365 and AVD, it was like nearly 15 episodes each, that's like 40 odd episodes. It does add up and you, you know, I don't know about anybody else, but I start to get a little bit bored if I'm honest sometimes. Um, and with these topics, you know, especially BDI, where, where do you end it? So anyway, we are starting a new topic, I launched it uh, last week, if you look at the, the final episode that's uh, around FS Logics, um, I launched it and I spoke about what I'm going to be talking about. So without further ado, let's get started, this is episode one. Um, of the uh, of the series and it's all going to be on Azure Arc. So today is actually going to be a, an overview of Azure Arc. Um, and we're going to start off obviously high level. We're going to talk about key features, talk about benefits, we'll talk a little bit about pricing. Um, there's a lot to Azure Arc. A lot of it's free. <clears throat> you know, a, a lot of the features are free, but there are certain elements you do have to have to pay for. So we'll, we'll go through that um, and then we're actually going to do a bit of a demo towards the end. Just a bit of an overview of the, of the portal. Um, and then as we go along and start to deploying more and more services in, in the different demos. So what, let's talk about what Azure Arc is first of all. So, you know, talking about now, today, a lot of organizations do struggle um, to control and govern um, what's now becoming increasingly sort of complex uh, environments. And these are the ones that, for example, extend from, you know, different, from across maybe data centers, multiple different type of clouds, you know, there's AWS, there's Google, GCP, there's, there's Azure. Um, also, you know, trying to govern um, and secure that edge as well. Uh, and each of these environments um, and, you know, and cloud, they, they all possess their own sort of management tools as well. Um, you know, and a new sort of DevOps and IT ops operational models as well. And again, this can be very hard to maintain, maintain the skill, and the same level of policy across all those resources. So this is where Azure Arc comes in. It simplifies governance and management um, by sort of delivering a consistent uh, multi-cloud and on-premises management platform. Uh, now, uh, obviously, for, for those who, who know my journey, I, I do currently work at Cubasys. We've done a great um, series around Azure Arc in different sort of scenarios. So I'll put the link in the description to some of those that are on YouTube as well, on Cubis's uh, YouTube channel. So I'll definitely, definitely have a, have a I'm, I'm in most of them as well. <laughs> Funnily enough, uh, I've kind of, um, in all of them, I think. So yeah, keep, keep that a look as well. So let's talk a little bit more Azure Arc. So it provides a centralized, unified way to manage your entire environment together by sort of projecting uh, your existing non-Azure and non-premises resources into as a resource manager. So obviously we're not including services already in Azure because you can already use all the management plane for that. This is non-Azure resources. You can manage VMs, uh, Kubernetes clusters, and databases as if they're sort of running in Azure. And we're going to be looking at more of that as we go along. You can use familiar Azure services and management capabilities as well, regardless of where your resources live. You can continue sort of using those traditional IT ops uh, while introducing DevOps practices as well to support the sort of new cloud native patterns in your environment. And finally, you can configure sort of custom locations uh, as a sort of an abstract, uh, as an abstract layer uh, on top of Azure Arc enabled Kubernetes clusters and sort of uh, cluster extensions. We're going to be looking at a lot of these services in demos as, as we go along. So this is a this is a this this image that you're seeing is courtesy of Microsoft Learn. Um, it, it's a very very powerful image. I thought you know why it would be very good for you to see this and let's talk a little bit about this diagram. So what it shows is um, currently how Azure Arc allows you to manage the following the sort of resources that we've been talking about. Uh, these resource types are hosted outside of Azure. So if you look at if you look at the sort of diagram that we've got at that top level, we've got Azure services, we've got unified operations, management, compliance, and governance, talking Azure Monitor, Purview, Defender of Cloud, all that jazz. And then that's where layer, low, layer below that, we have the sort of um, Arc-enabled servers, Arc VM, SQL Service, Kubernetes machine resources, Arc-enabled service, services resources like data, apps, and um, machine learning services. And we've got the Arc-enabled industrial asset resources as well. And then we have 
the arm, the Azure Resource Manager and the sort of Azure Control Panel. Um, this is like down on the edge and the Azure Arc, and this is what extends outside. So now uh, with that sort of down arrow in the middle, we're going outside of Azure now. So we have our multi-cloud on the left with GCP, AWS and Oracle. We then have on-premises sort of resources like Azure Local, uh, VMware, System Center, Virtual uh, Machine Manager. We're going to, be, going to be testing some of these as we go along. And on the right-hand side, we've got that sort of operation line. This is where we've got Azure IoT operations enabled by Arc, servers, Kubernetes, industrial assets, things like that. So we'll talk about managing these, you know, Azure Arc allows you to manage those resources. So we're we'll talking about servers and VMs, you know, both Windows and Linux. Um, you know, you can provision, resize, delete, manage, um, even the ones that's in, you know, servers and, and compute that's inside Azure Local or vCenter. And we will be having to play with vCenter and, and, and aligning that and integrating that with Azure Arc as well as we go along in this series. From a Kubernetes clusters perspective, you can attach and configure those clusters running essentially anywhere with multiple supported distributions. As well with Azure Data Services as well, so you can run data services on premises, at the edge, or sort of in the public cloud using Kubernetes and sort of the infrastructure of your choice essentially. Um, SQL Managed and Postgres SQL as well, which you can only in preview services, are currently available as well. And you can extend Azure Services to SQL Server, SQL Server instances as well. And these are all things that we're going to be looking at as we go along. Um, so this this diagram is a real good representation of the sort of services that are supported in Azure Arc. So let's talk about some of those key benefits now. So some of those key scenarios that Azure Arc supports, you can implement consistent inventory, management, governance, and security for your servers or your services and servers across your environment. You can configure Azure VM extensions to use Azure Management Services. Uh, to, to monitor, secure, and update your services. Again, we're going to, be, we're going to be playing with a lot of these as we go along. Uh, you can manage and govern Kubernetes clusters at scale. Use Git, GitOps and, uh, to deploy configuration across one or more clusters from your Git repositories. You've got that zero-touch compliance and configuration as well, especially for sort of Kubernetes clusters using Azure Policy, which is very, very powerful. And you can run, we mentioned data servers, and you can run those on any sort of Kubernetes environment. Uh, as it runs in Azure, specifically, you know, Azure SQL Managed Instances and Azure Database uh, for Postgres SQL Servers as well, that's called in preview. And this gives you benefits such as, you know, being able to upgrade, update, your security updates and monitoring. Uh, and with that, you can use sort of elastic scale and apply those updates without sort of any application downtime, even without sort of that continuous connection to Azure as well. Another big benefit scenario is we're able to create those sort of custom locations on top of your Azure Arc enable Kubernetes clusters and you can use use them as sort of target locations for deploying Azure services instances. Um, you know, deploy your Azure service clusters extensions for Azure Arc enabled data services, Azure container apps on Azure Arc as well, and even an event grid on Kubernetes. And then perform virtual machine lifecycle and management operations on Azure Local, for example, and on-premises environments. Um, you know, with VMware, we're going to be looking at we're going to integrate VE Center later on in this series. We've also got System Center Virtual Machine Manager SC VMM as well, um, and this is all through interactive and non-interactive methods. This is obviously going to empower developers and application teams to self-serve VM operations on demand using uh, Azure RBAC. And that unified experience viewing your Azure Arc enable resources, whether you're using sort of the Azure portals, your CLI, PowerShell, or REST APIs, we're going to be looking at some of these different sort of management um, techniques as we go along. So we want to a bit of pricing. So there's obviously a lot of features, and not all of them cost. Um, when we talk about Azure Arc enable servers, um, the control pane functionality is offered at no extra cost. So that includes sort of resource organization through Azure management groups and tags, searching and indexing through Azure Resource Graph, you know, access and security through uh, Azure uh, role based access control, environments and automation through sort of templates extensions. These are all free. So any Azure service that is used on Azure Arc enabled service, such as Defender for Cloud or Azure Monitor, will be charged as per the pricing for those specific services. Okay, so there's no additional charge. The same price for things like Defender Cloud, Azure Monitor, uh, is the same as if you were using Azure natively, right? Um, then we have pricing around Azure Arc enabled VMware and SC VMM. Um, so the following things that we can see, these are offered at no extra cost. So 
all the Azure Arc Control plane functionalities uh, that are offered at no extra cost with Azure Arc Enable servers, same thing. You've got discovering single pane of glass inventory view of your VMware vCenter and SC VMM managed uh, estates, that's VMs, templates, networks, data stores, uh, clouds, clusters, hosts, and sort of resource pools. You've got life cycles, so you can create, resize, update, and delete power cycles, you know, start, stop, and restart operations of virtual machines, including the, the ability to sort of delegate cell service access to these sort of operations using Azure Robust Access Control. And finally, everything that's free is the management of VMs using Azure Portal, CLI, REST APIs, and the automation for infrastructure as code, templates such as ARM, Terraform, and Biceps. So these are all things that are free. Any Azure services that are used on the Azure Arc Enabled, we mentioned you know, VMware, vSphere, SC, VMM, Defender for Cloud, Azure Monitor, things like this, they are all charged uh, at the price and service that they would be if you were native as well. And quickly on a Kubernetes perspective, and again, that's any Azure service that is used on Azure Arc Enabled Kubernetes, such as Defender for Cloud or Azure Monitor, again, they'll be charged at the, the per price um, for that service. Okay, we're going to jump into a bit of demo now. So this is just a bit of an overview. I want to show you the portal, what it looks like, and some of the features we're going to be kind of configuring as we go along. So please join me in the demo. Hello, we are back in the IMIT demo lab, and we're in Azure, and we want to go to Azure Arc. Um, so this is where you manage all your resources from. So when you when you you know when you add resources into Azure Arc and you install the agents, and we're going to be going through some of these these with different services, AWS, Windows, etc. As we go along. This is where you manage it all from, essentially. So on the overview, you can, you know, let you to add resources, you can, um, you know, deploy certain services, you can use Defender for Cloud from here. You can also even explore the sort of sandbox using Azure Arc, or Arcbox to deploy that. So you can click on this, for example, and take you to the link for a Jumpstart Arcbox. Um, I've already done that. It costs it cost quite a bit to, to run that in my, um, in my uh, Azure, Azure uh, tenant. So we will do that again. As we go down the left hand side, this is where you'll see all the Azure Arc enabled resources. So this is, you know, th things from on-premises, multi-cloud, um, include virtual machines, um, Kubernetes clusters, anything and everything. Uh, and again, as we go along in this series, we'll start adding services here and you'll see them. We we'll talk about Azure Arc resources. We've got machines, we've got Kubernetes clusters. So we're going to be adding both of those as we go along. We'll show the different ways in which we can add a machine, create a machine, uh, in a connected host environment if we want Kubernetes clusters as well. We'll show we'll create a Kubernetes cluster with Arc. We'll add one as well. As we go down, so we can add our host environments. Now I don't have an Azure local one. Um, I am going to try and get I've got a VMware vCenter one that I'm going to try and add. Um, and we'll see how we can manage that. Um, I don't have anything for SC VMM management servers at the moment, but again, I might try and get hold of one and configure one in the meantime. But again, this is where you can manage all those services. And as we go along, we'll be able to look at all these different features. Um, so again, you can here you could you could you could order the hardware, you could download the software to install those Azure local software services, and you could deploy it as well. Um, so this lets you actually download the local HCI OS. As we go vCenter, this is where you can add your vCenter. And we'd we'd go, we're gonna go through this process. Uh, again, we can either use an existing bridge or we'll create a bridge. We'll probably use an existing bridge because I want to show how to create a bridge as well. For the data services, we've got the SQL instances, managed instances, etc. So we're going to try and do a bit of this with some virtual machines as well. This is your edge resources. Again, we'll try and have a look at adding some of these and see what options we've got around here. Um, we'll go through all this and show you how you can do that. Application service, app services, containers, these are all things, again, um, outside of Azure that you can add in and, and, again, might struggle to replicate some of this and, and try and use those, but I'll try my best. I've got the Windows Server, ESU licenses and things like that. And these are where you can, so this is where we're going to add our AWS account, we've got our custom locations, our service principles, this is where we're going to add our resource bridge, um, etc. So this is just, this is the portal where we're going to spend a lot of our time when it comes to the demos. Uh, for example, in the next episode, we're going to try and add an AWS resource and we'll show how we can add that. We'll go through that process. So that was just a quick overview, a uh, quick overview of, of Azure Arc. We're going to get into more details as we go along and a bit of an overview of the portal as well. So this is a this is a normal video for me. It's not a member one. I've got loads of content on my member only 
kind of section. All my exam content that I do, I'm, I'm releasing uh, MS900 this week and then the MS900 labs next week. I'll put a link into some of my member videos as well down below around exam content. If you are looking at sort of doing any exams, I've got multiple ones on there. I'll put some of the links in the description. Um, so thank you for watching. Until next time, goodbye.